Apple has updated the Mac lineup all over in that 7 day long launch event and the biggest Mac upgrade this year is the RAM upgrade, you know, for the AI. The 8 gigs of RAM which ruled the Mac for 16 years is finally over and this year's M board is also very powerful and makes me, an old M1 user, a little bit more excited. Before we watch what the new M4 will bring to the table, let's take a look at a product from our sponsor. This Neutral Freedom X is an office chair that revolutionizes the modern office environment with a unique design concept and practical performance. First and foremost, Neutral is all about design for modern lifestyle. Not just a chair, but a dynamic partner that adapts to your work habits. Its flexibility allows you to lean forward when you need to work deeper and lean back when you need to take a break. A design that keeps you energized and comfortable after a long day at work. The Freedom X side tables are designed to be practical, pulling out with the ease to provide stability and support for your work or coffee breaks. Dual cup holders and three adjustable angles make working and relaxing a breeze. And whether you want to put your laptop, books, or snacks on it, it can accommodate your needs really well. In addition, the Freedom X is a new favorite spot for you and your pet so you can enjoy your work while spending quality time with your pet. Okay, you can get to know about this chair in the link down below. Now let's get back to the Mac Mini M4. When I saw that the Mac Mini has further shrunk down in size, I was happy that my desk space will be bigger again. The new one has shrunk in size to 58% compared to the previous one. Now it looks about the same size as a mini PC, close to the size and weight of two cans of Coke. And unlike those mini PCs that deliberately ignore the power supply part, which is a false advertisement, like if you buy a phone that can charge at 100 watts, but you need to buy a special charger and cable, or even a specific power requirement. The Mac Mini shrinks in size by pushing the two 10 Gbps USB ports to the front and turning them into 8 ports. A Thunderbolt port has been added and HDMI port has been upgraded to support a wider range of displays. Also, the port that has been pushed into the front is a 3.5mm audio jack, while the power button, where you know it, has been pushed down to the bottom. It's not the first time Apple has done this kind of a stupid design, such as the uh, Magic Mouse. When I was using the M1 Mac Mini, I almost never touched the power button though. Even for this new one, my habit is probably not going to change. This is because M series chip Mac has excellent energy efficiency. For example, in standby mode, just open a few tabs on Chrome, play music, the power consumption is only 2 to 3 watts, which is even more energy efficient than your router. And if you are ready to take a break, all you have to do is turn off the monitor. At that point, the Mac Mini's power consumption drops to just 1 watt, which is the same power consumption as my PC when it's turned off. Based on this energy performance, I think the Mac Mini is well suited as a computer nod for home labs. For example, I've run a few Docker services on it, like these. It's worth noting that the new Mini also has better speakers, although it's better than the previous gym, but I think it's still just a speaker that can make sound. In reality, the M1 has enough performance for most people, so what I was expecting from it was a higher GPU performance, but that performance is only at the level of the 1060. The biggest improvement is the CPU, both the single core and multi core, which is even more powerful than the 12400 on the PC. The performance is similar in the Cinebench 2024. We also watched the power consumption performance during the test, and we can see that the M4 will consume a lot more power than the M1 which is still acceptable considering the uh, double or even triple performance improvement. We also took a look at the uh, read and write performance of the uh, SSD where we were surprised to find that the 256 gigs of internal SSD didn't perform as well as the external SSD. So we might be able to have a better experience if we put the system on the external SSD. As an editor, mostly I use my computer for video editing. So I prepared two DaVinci projects here for comparison. The first project file has only HEVC 10 bit 420 footage, both 200 Mbps, but some are 4K50, some are 6025. The other project has some more fusion clips. In terms of video rendering export speed, the M4 has a definite advantage. 
even more powerful than my usual PC. What surprised me the most was the uh, timeline preview performance of the M4. In the past, I've had a hard time achieving smooth timeline playback in 4K on my PC. So in order to, to check the video, most of the time I needed to render and export the video. Now I can preview my video directly inside DaVinci and make changes. When it comes to animation and special effects, the M4 surprised me with its performance. I used the two short animations for testing and the M4 was fast. But it should be noted that at this time, 16 gigs of RAM is just about enough and everyone's performance is not that good. Neither can preview the animation effect directly in the Fusion anymore. If you switch to 4K or more complex animations, it's not just the CPU or GPU performance bottleneck, it's the unified memory. Although Apple talks about the game performance every year, the threshold of game porting toolkit, whiskey, and other translation tools is too complicated for many users and is not stable. So if I play a game on my Mac, I'm more likely to use PlayOver to run the iPad version of the game. You can see that for both Honkai Star Rail and ZZZ, M4 performed better than M1. But don't just make a purchase based on this yet. If you have a requirement for image quality, then you might want to sit down and take a look at the characters carefully. The detail is still not as good as it's on the PC. And for a more complete gaming experience, you must also have a joystick. If you don't know what controller to choose, you can go to Geek Wheels and buy a controller that supports Xbox mode for the best gaming experience. Overall, I have a good impression with the new Mac Mini because it is an almost perfect machine for those who need it. The key thing is the price. Previously, it would have cost you $800 for a 16 plus 256 setup. Now it's only $600. If you only have a budget of $600, you will basically have to buy old PCs or branded machines with the obvious drawbacks on Amazon. None of them are as capable as this little guy. But don't think it's capable of running large projects. It is just the entry to the Mac OS experience. For true productivity, I'd recommend buying a version with more RAM or a PC based on what you are working on. All right, this is the M4 Mac Mini review. Hope you like it. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. And we'll find some China. See you next time.